cuddly, cuddly, cuddly. Hi. I'm Jackie. Mm -hmm. And I love, love, love teddy bears. They're cuddly. You can hold them close. You can love them. They don't reject you. If you want to cry, you can just hold them close to your chest. And you feel better. If I've worked 16, 18 hours a day, I could come home really tired, upset, and frustrated, look at one of my favorite bears, pick it up, hug it, and feel a sense of comfort and relief. Aww. That's indescribable. Sweet, 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 sweet. I'm Nicole, and Jackie is my mom. The last time I saw my mom's house, her front door didn't even open. It would only crack a few inches, and then you had to slide into the door. It felt like I was in a cave. I'm Gerald, and Jackie is my mom. It's been about eight years since I've been in the house, but I do not remember a time when the house wasn't hoarded. The bears and dolls were placed wherever they could be because new ones were arriving weekly. If I had to guess how much money she spent on this collection, let's just say just dolls and bears, it's over a million dollars. Boom! I ran upstairs, and he was running around in a circle saying, dial 911, holding his hand with the blood streaming down, and his fingers were gone. I had some explosives that I was building, and I lit the fuse, and the fuse turned out to be one that they would light even if underwater. So there was zero chance of me putting it out, which means I lost a few seconds to throwing it, and it exploded in my right hand. I quit my job, and I homeschooled him for that year. He got his degree and went off to college. But that's when I couldn't go back to work because I was diagnosed with kidney cancer. So because of the kidney cancer and complications and other serious health issues, I was not able to work. After she got her severance package, that's when she had a lot of cash in hand and things accelerated. It's like it was already flooding and the severance package was when the dam broke. The beginning of the end was eBay. I would overbid if I really wanted to win something and I end up paying three, four times what something is worth. She spent everything she had. Um, the severance is gone. There is no more money, and right now she is living on Social Security. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, my God. She has had times where instead of paying the mortgage, she's purchased bears. Her overspending is going to cause her to lose her home. I'm not worried about the house. I'm worried about her. This is horrible. <laughs> oh, good morning. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Good morning. I'm Mark Pfeffer. Nice meeting you. Come Absolutely. on in. Thank you, dear. I'm Mark Pfeffer. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and specialist in hoarding disorder. So I'm looking around this room, and I'm seeing hundreds of teddy bears. I wanted to just ask you about this room. I've been collecting for over 46 years. And recently, I've been robbed of all my best bears. By no means is this a reflection of the collection I had. And I want to talk to you about that, but I have one question I want to ask you. What's your vision? What do you want to see? Space. What Space, space, space. No clutter. I'm here to help you if you let me. I am willing to do whatever it takes. Okay. I am so happy to have everyone here and to get started on the project. I'm Standalyn Robertson, Certified Professional Organizer. 
So we're going to work on your garage to build a path to get into the house. Okay. If something is clearly garbage, mm -hmm. can we put it on the truck or yes. do you need to look at it? No. Okay. So if it's an old... You guys will have a lot of freedom. That's real important. Do yes, you mean it is. that? I mean it. Okay. I'm ready for a new life. Well, we're here to give it to you. All right. So let's get started. Let's get started. I was astounded when I saw Jackie let the items go from her garage. You guys are the best. But these are not items that she holds in high esteem. The teddy bears is going to be an issue for her because that was her salvation. I don't want to look at this. You don't want to look at this? It's awful. <laughs> Tell me what the tears are about. All of my beautiful, one-of-a-kind designer bears, they're gone. Jackie, I think your tears are premature. We just started. This is the tip of the iceberg. No, I know what's left. I know what I have. I am. I... And this is what I told you. They took all of my top quality stuff, and then they went and opened boxes of the old stuff and dumped it so that it looked like the house was still full and cluttered. <laughs> Well, we're going to go through this, and Sandler's going to help you figure out what to do with these things, but you have to face this fear. The reason I'm letting Jackie keep her beliefs without confrontation is because that's going to be a longer-term process therapeutically. But right now, I want to get through the cleanup and for her to see that there is some hope. What do you need right now? Do you need to sit down? Okay. All right, let me take her. Okay. You should go oh in. Come on. I'm concerned about the next couple of days. If she continues on the path that we're going now, we won't even get one room done. Oh my God! <laughs> They've been terrorizing me, it's awful! <laughs> she honestly believes that someone is in the house and is taking her items. So we had to stop, you know, try to settle her down and refocus in terms of the original plan. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am sincerely sorry that my stress and concern slowed the process, and it won't happen today. Great. We want to help you, so I want you to tell me how you would like to use this time. What I'd like to do is clear as much as we can, and even if all we accomplish is this area, I'm very pleased. Okay, great. Let's get started. I just wanted to let you know, I just got off the phone with our warehouse manager and he's ready and we're waiting for it and... Let's go for it. Let's empty this place. That's music yes. to my ears, yes. hearing you say that. You mean it? I mean it. And it's time for me to start a new life. I need more bags, guys. In the beginning, Jackie didn't trust that we had good intentions for her. But today, on the last day, she really came around. We had three truckloads of teddy bears and dolls go off to auction. <gasps> oh my God! Look at the kitchen! Oh my goodness! So what does this mean for you? Freedom. This is the first day in six months I haven't cried my heart out. So this makes it the first day of the rest of my life. I want to hear from this one. Do we have tears of I, joy? Um, yeah, yeah. I really didn't think she would ever be able to get this far. So I am very hopeful. 
I think the, the biggest moment was when she said, take them all. And Jackie, that was nothing but God. Well, it was God, but it was also the fact that when your house is so cluttered that there can be someone there for months at a time hiding, that is unbelievable. And if you can't prove it, then it becomes a serious problem for you. Today was a great first step. We've begun to address the hoarding, but now it's time for Jackie to make a commitment to work on some of her other mental health issues with a good therapist and commit to a therapeutic alliance. I don't know how I could ever thank you. I want you to thank me by oh, enjoying it. I will. <laughs> I cannot even express how happy I am right now. I now have a safe, wonderful, comfortable area in which to clear my mind and see hope. And I'm determined to take back control of my life. This has been a dream come true. My name is June and I'm 28 and I'm a full-time student and a social work assistant. This is the worst that I've ever, ever lived. There's so much stuff. I just don't want to get rid of it. My name is Bob and I'm June's father. The entire three bedroom place is a maze to walk through. There's no place to sit down. My name is Anne. June is my daughter. The whole kitchen, dining room, living room is just a mess. It's gone out of hand. I'm Tori. My mom is June. I'm 13 years old. After my wife and I separated, June got pregnant. Her mother did not want to have a grandbaby and did not want to raise a grandbaby. It was very hard for me to see some things, you know, going on with her being such a young mother. I told her, well, you come live with me and we'll figure it out somehow. Whatever happens, it'll all work out. My mother always kept a clean, nice house. And was always, everything was in its place. When this was my grandmother's house, it was clean, not cluttered. She would be very disappointed in how it looks now. What I've done with the place, she wouldn't be very proud. My mother, she'd be rolling over in her grave. My dad will say to me, Nana could see this place. She would kick you out of here. I don't go over very often or stay very long. At first, it was like complete devastation. And that was my excuse for not doing anything in the house. So she was like my mom, my best friend, and my grandma all in one. and. I still consider this her house. So to have her house looking like this, it's so much easier to leave and not deal with it than it is to think about how she would feel. We have tons of boxes that are filled with just random stuff of hers from her childhood or whatever. It feels to me that if I get rid of things that have sentimental value, this knickknack, this statue, this stuffed animal, feels like if I get rid of it, that I'm gonna forget about whatever memory is attached to it. it. Just makes me feel sorry for her that she has emotional attachments to pencils. We can't eat at my dining room table because there's so much stuff that has sentimental value or somebody may want someday. Whenever I go through stuff and say, Mom, you haven't ever used this, or it's my stuff, and I go, Mom, this was yours, I'm getting rid of it, then she'll just yell at me, well, not yell at me, but tell me, don't get rid of that, we'll just move it over here, and then she'll just relocate it in our house. Mom, 
I'm tired of having to maneuver my way around. Like in my one little room, I can move all that stuff into an apartment easily, even with roommates. Victoria started saying when she turns 18, she's out of here. She's moving away. She doesn't care where, she's going. On my 18th birthday, I'm gonna pack up my stuff and move out of the house. It's just her and I here, and I know that our living situation has put a tremendous strain on our relationship as mother and daughter. Stop it, go away. I'd like to help take the stress off of um, June and and the stress off at Tori because um, it's definitely tension in the house. It's just too much. Hi, June. Hi, I'm Dr. Zazio. Hi, Nice June. to meet you. My name is Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in OCD and compulsive hoarding. When was the last time this room was functional? When my grandmother lived here. Which was how long ago? Over a year. Okay. She has this need to hold on to memories through these objects, and she's having a very difficult time letting go of them because she's afraid that if she doesn't have those objects, she'll forget the memories. Are these your stuffed animals? Most of them are hers, Most actually. Okay. okay. It's about 50-50, I'll say. Yeah, you would. Say that. So you're in disagreement on that one. The relationship between June and Tori is very interesting. There's about 15 years that separates them, and June very much is trying to be a sister rather than be a mother who is teaching her responsibility. We haven't been able to sit down at that dining table and have dinner since we moved in here. So okay. we kind of just eat at our separate desks. I'm sensing there's not a lot of quality family time together. It sounds like you guys are in different rooms doing different things. In Tori's case, I believe the impact of not being able to have friends over is channeling in her desire to move out of the house as soon as possible. I, I'm seeing bags of clothes also. Those are bags of doll clothes, which were hers. Some are mine, most you are You can not get rid of the whole mine. bag of doll clothes for all I care. My experience in talking with Tori has been that she does not want to live in this environment and she very much wants her room in order, she very much wants the house in order. I don't think that it's true that by getting rid of her stuff it's going to separate her from her memories. I think that her hoarding was accelerated by having a daughter so young. There's an aspect of trying to relive her childhood. Let's talk about the Rainbow Brights. Oh, there's much more than just Rainbow Bright. <laughs> okay. There's Care Bears and Popples and... Okay. She's holding on to the past as a way to feel some kind of stability and continuity in her life today, but it's not working. It's interfering with her life and it's causing her distress and the rest of her family. It just makes me feel like they don't have freedom, you know, they have a, a cluttered house, a cluttered mind. How can you live like that? Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Standalyn Robertson, a certified professional organizer. What we're going to do is we're going to break up into some teams. June realizes that her home is filling up with things and she's lost. Nothing goes into the truck without June's permission. She gets the final say on everything. Unless she changes some major things in her life, it's gonna continue to go down a path of accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. You guys ready to go? Work hard? Good. All right. Keep, 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 okay. keep. You definitely want to keep this? I 75% want to keep it. Okay. This is the lamp that goes in Tori's room. It matches the lamp that she already has in her room. Okay. I don't think I'll ever use it if it has to be on the other side of my bed. I just think that it's nice to keep two matching lamps together. I don't really care. 
how many matching lamps I have. It's a lamp. Why do you have emotional attachments to lamps? I don't have any emotional attachment to it. It's oh, a pair. If you want to get rid of the other one, get rid of both of them together. Well, though. do you have another one? So you're saying it has to be all or none? Sort of. Okay. With those. My relationship with my mom, she's more of a sister to me. You know how sisters bicker? We might be bickering over the simplest stuff. I'm a teenager. It doesn't matter how much my lamps match. It does. Why do you want to keep a lamp? They go together. They're so? a pair. So? So one goes on one side of your bed, one goes on the other side of your bed. I want to ask you how you're feeling right now because I'm seeing a lot of smiles. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like you're on the verge of some tears right now too. And when we talked before I got here, you told me, heads up, my defense is I'm gonna use a lot of smiling <laughs> like you're doing again right now. And you're wiping away the tears. So I need you to tell me how, how you're feeling right now. Part of the reason, it's not the lamp, but the stuff that I have came from my grandma. So I know not like, oh, it came from my grandma, just I can't afford to be buying new things. You know, most of my stuff that I buy is from thrift stores. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure we could always pick up a tacky, mismatched lamp from a thrift store. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what it came down to was a lot of anxiety on June's part about her fear that because of limited finances that they would not be able to replace those lamps. And she was able to reveal that once we started to talk a little bit about it. If I keep buying things and buying things, then I'm not going to be able to afford food. I cried over a lamp because I can't afford to buy new lamps. I can't afford to go, okay, we're gonna go ahead and go buy a bunch of new whatevers. Lamps are expensive. Right. You know? Can we keep the lamp but keep it outside of my room? Because right now we're doing stuff. In Why don't you get rid of that fish nightlight thing on your counter okay. that you haven't used in years and it can sit there? All right. Okay. Good? You okay with that? Yeah. 100%? Uh huh. Okay. Can you give your mom a hug? <laughs> the progress has been significant, but we've also had some stumbling blocks, primarily around dealing with stuffed animals related to the past. Based on what you've been learning, try to help her to make some good decisions. Mm -hmm. okay. I think so. Okay. My goal was to help them to work together as mother and daughter. Can we put the Littlest Pet Shop things with my Rainbow Bright stuff for my friend Ashley? Because she wants them. It's up to you. It's your them. stuff. Okay. Grab she the would Rainbow love Bright. The Littlest Pet Shop. Go ahead and put those you in the bag. You got all three? No, no. Wait, what? Gonna, uh, what happened there? Oh. Nanas, nanas, nanas. Which ones do you want to keep But those are stuff that, that she gave to me. I think that should be a different category. We don't need that. Okay, so put that. June was actually doing a good job encouraging Tori to get rid of some things using some of the tools that she's been learning since we've been here. Okay, so Nana. here's the one you're keeping from yeah. Nana. You bought it for me. They both came from Nana. Okay, so you which one are you, you keeping? So why don't you get rid of Furby instead? No, why do you want me to get rid of Furby? You don't so touch much. him, you don't even play okay. with him. Tori became emotional about animals that were associated with her Nana. It's the only person in her life that has died, and she was very important to her. It was Nana's, if you want to keep them. Well, Where was Nana's? Here's Nana. Nana, Nana, Nana. Nana's Nana, right Nana. here. You can get rid of it, it's okay. But Nana wouldn't want you to have all this. I know that. She began to recall every single episode when she was given a, a stuffed animal from Nana. You were the brave one yesterday saying, Mom, memories are not in the items. They're like the only thing that I could still hold on to. You know, she's trying to be the tough kid who doesn't cry, and of course I'm trying to be the tough mom who holds it all together. It's good that she was able to let it out. What if we took pictures of them? Take pictures we and make a photo album? Hold on to the pictures. But you can remember how this ginormous dog made you feel after she died. She's doing some of the same behaviors that her mom did. I'm not worried though that this is going to be a long-term problem for her. I do think that she's going to need some help once we leave to help her deal with some of the loss that she's had in her past. I'm a lot more optimistic than I was yesterday and 
it already looks like a home. My mom still has some challenges of learning what to get rid of and what to keep. She did a good job. It's hard work. It was very hard for her, but she did it. She's making really good decisions while she's got somebody standing, encouraging her to make those decisions. But I don't believe she can do it on her own, and it'll be critical that she have follow-up care. I think she's taken two or three steps on a long journey. This is going to be possibly a lifelong battle. Maybe I'll have my family and my boyfriend over for dinner. Great. And now that I can prepare food in my kitchen with all that counter space. <laughs> My problem is definitely not solved <laughs> after this weekend. Oh my gosh, I can walk in here. I know that I've learned a lot of tools, how to make better decisions. I do have a long road ahead of me. My name is Melinda. I'm 33 years old and I'm a teacher. I live here with my mother and my younger sister. When you walk through the front door of our house, the first thing you're gonna notice is the fact that there's just clutter everywhere. Boxes and bags stacked several feet high. My name is Erin. I'm 28 years old and I'm a cashier. We've collected things probably all our lives in this house. I am Luann and I am Melinda and Aaron's mother. Yeah, I get scared sometimes when I'm in the house because I get wobbly really easy. When I first get up, I have to watch what I do. And uh, it's just so hard to even walk through my house. We have 10 cats in the home with us. They are anywhere and everywhere. If we see them make a mess, we clean it up as soon as we can. They're a handful, but they're, they're a lot of company. I think with both my girls, the reason they hoard is they get something and it brings back memories. It's so, some kind of sentimental value. They don't want to get rid of anything. I'm not sure why I buy things that I don't need. I think at the time I convinced myself for some reason that I do need it, I think, oh, maybe I can use that sometime. And the sometimes just never comes. I acquire a lot of things, and we buy a lot of repeats because we'll buy something and it gets misplaced or gets thrown out. Who knows what happens to it? It just disappears. So we buy more. I probably have se at least several hundred stuffed animals. I was about 15 when I got my first stuffed animal. I've always liked stuffed animals, and the girls like them too, and you know, every time we'd go out, we'd buy one from a different place. We have thousands of them. It's very difficult to live in a house with three people that have a problem with clutter. We blame each other for the mess, even though we all do contribute to it. If something falls that doesn't belong to us, we'll blame the other person for bringing it in or for setting it in the wrong place or whatever. My bones have gotten really brittle, and that scares the daylights out of me because uh, if I would fall wrong, I'm afraid I could end up paralyzed from my waist down. DSS concerns me because I've been told that they can actually remove us from the house. We're not wealthy. We don't have the money even to stay in a hotel for a long period of time, so I'm not sure where we would live if we were removed from the house. I don't want to lose this house, and I don't want our family to be, to be split up either. Dr. Wilson. I'm Aaron. Nice to meet you. Hey, Come on in. Thanks. My name is Dr. Reed Wilson and I am director of uh, Anxiety Disorders Clinic. 
This is my mom, Luann, my sister, Melinda. Hi. This is Dr. Wilson. So we have a household of, of three women, um, all living together for a number of years, all collecting a variety of things. We have a fireplace, but we can't really use it. Mom, where do you sit? Usually over here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. On the chair. OK. We've got a fortress that we're up against. When we look at a very unique situation like this, we've got three people in the same family who are all hoarders and a family history of it. We don't know the exact percentage of learned behavior versus genetics, but we're finding with a family in a situation like this, it is highly genetic. So this is the kitchen area. Who does the cooking around here? I do it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. do Most you... of it. The kitchen has things piled all over it, so sanitation-wise, it's a, a terrible mess. Do you have access to everything, Mom? Or It's a little difficult sometimes, but uh, yes. The environment is not at all physically healthy. The ability to move through places in the house is, is stymied. Uh, they've got bedrooms that they can't even, you, know, you have to take one giant step in and then leap over to the bed with a flashlight in order to get in your room. Now you don't have a lot of access to that bed, do you? No. I think the two daughters are to some degree in denial about the mother's physical condition and what the house is doing uh, to her. A lot of this is clothes for you, not a lot of it's, collections. It's not all clothes, all, all my clothes. It's a little bit of everybody's. Oh, so everybody's got some. Yeah, you... some of them Aaron's, and then there's a few things of Melinda's. And... At this point in their lives, their mother has a health problem that needs to be managed and their attachment to the hoarding is keeping that from occurring. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy. My name is Standalyn Robertson. I'm a certified professional organizer. So I'm going to go over a few of the guidelines. Nothing leaves this property without your permission. You're going to set the pace for the project. If you want a lot done, then you've got to make a lot of decisions. Some of the decisions are going to be hard, but they're going to get you closer to your goal. OK, gang. Let's, let's get Good going. Yep. Yeah, Good. Good. It's a little bit more complicated when you're dealing with three people that are hoarders. What we want to start with is everything that's open and exposed. Yeah. And then figure Worry out about the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're not supposed to be going through boxes either, so. It will not be easy because they're bringing to the table habits that they've had for years. More hand sanitizer. I'm surprised at the amount of hand sanitizer we're finding. That's Aaron. Yeah, and what's the fear? Disease. OK. I Disease. don't know where the match is to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing this a lot. Empty I'm cans. noting the, the empty. Are you saving? Like, is there a, a coupon or something you're saving? Because I'm seeing just these just thrown in a lot of places. No. How they interacted with each other, how they process things, it's not going to change overnight. Okay. One of the things I'm predicting will happen is that there'll be conflicts between two of the women or all three of them. Are you making sure you're not throwing stuff away with important numbers on it? Not because this is such a conflictual family, but because it deflects the primary task. Pitch the bird feeder. <laughs> the bird feeder's mine, and she told me to pitch it. It's just dirty well, and rusted. Well, and... it can be tossed. It just aggravated me that she made the decision without even saying, um, do you mind? And did you realize it was hers? It's been here. It's rusted. It's filthy. We don't use it. Is That's this a keeper? keeper. Keep it doesn't matter. Okay. So we're, can I, I was just asking say something? Mom. I'm just going to have to tell them we've got to work together. They've got to let up on each other. And they've got to deal with this. Erin, are you all right? Yeah. Oh, OK. I just don't want I saw certain that. things advertised. Uh, what did you find? We have bugs. Bugs. Finding the carpet beetles now. Oh, carpet beetles, is that what they are? They're all over the place. I would say from here on out, any of this stuff has to be junked, really, to be safe for you. Do you mind if I just put some disinfectant spray in here? Would you be all right with that, or would that get your asthma going? I should be all right with that. OK. 
up there and it got too dirty being mixed in with all this stuff. Oh. It's the size that's of this. It. There. See that one? Wasn't that that's, one? That's one that's of them. That's one, yeah. Can I just check in and find out what you're doing and why you're Some on stuff the... that was on the bed that was clean and wasn't supposed to go got okay. tossed with everything else. In the big picture of getting your room done, tell me where that is on a scale of... I think because we haven't found them already, they're probably mixed in with stuff that's contaminated. Okay. So... Okay, so can, is it fair to say in the big picture? We can let it go. Okay. Are you Everyone okay with off that? the truck. This isn't how we want to okay. spend our time. I'm just aggravated. I'm looking at all this stuff, and we're not getting anywhere. Stuff coming out of mom's room, it's going to the dining room. I got to go through it. It's not all going to be accomplished today. They're carrying the weight of this stuff around on their shoulders. It's actually taking a toll on them physically. I'm just getting tired. And I know we just got how many more hours to go. I just ache so bad. I just want to sleep. But I know I got to get this done. I'm excited about having it cleaned up and getting to be able to move around a little bit better in there and not have to worry about tripping on things and cracking my toes and just getting, literally getting around in there. I'm hoping that we can cope with the stuff that's still here just by maybe tackling a couple of boxes a day and then hopefully we can actually claim the rest of this space. I think today was the day that I really realized what this disease is all about. It's a lot to, to overcome, especially in just two days. There's a lot to do yet, but I mean, we have really made a big difference. Aftercare will be very important here. They really need to work with the therapist and work through, and this will be a lifelong struggle for them. If they get no reinforcement out of this, either from each other or from somebody else to, who's an objective observer to come in, no, it'll be back to a mess.